look in the eyes of my brother without shedding a tear for my brother i really want to try for my brother yo does i truly do feel for my <laughs> 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 halloween special <laughs> hey. i was not expecting that but you got you got to keep them on their toes uh and plus that, that that limiter been fucking with me, so uh my, my yo hasn't been appreciated. Yeah. Uh at, at, at be anyway. So I was like, oh, we gonna we gonna go the the inverted route this time. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. We thank you for coming. Sorry if my eyes look a little low, it's because the light is sitting up here, right? I promise I'm not high. This time, <laughs> no, uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm in season, so I won't smoke. Makes my muscles tight. Uh, we want to thank y'all for joining us. We are normally four brothers, uh, different mothers and daddies. Last time I checked, uh, all from the Miller neighborhood of Gary, Indiana, uh, come together, have these frequented conversations where we challenge each other, we laugh, we joke, we talk about labias, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> We're missing one from the crew. A Dub couldn't join us today, and um, and life is happening, so we didn't invite a guest yet. One days we're gonna have guests. So those of you who are listening, that you're like, man, I've been asking, be yo, yo, we we got you. I promise, it just hasn't happened. Life is going on, but yo, we pride ourselves on having these conversations where we are always. Uh, I don't know about y'all. I go back and listen to old episodes and I'm like, man, one, I have no recollection of the shit that I said. So if, <laughs> so, <laughs> if, if someone was like, man, on episode three, you said this and I found the problem. I'm like, I said that shit. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is entertaining because you, you kind of forget what, what we said, but when you go back, it's like, oh, that's cool. Right. <laughs> it's like watching a show that you mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is why this is why i really hope uh, uh i i hope all of this ages well because if it does come back to bite us in the ass i'm gonna be like yo do you get how different of a person i was back then who knew yeah. that you know like prejudice to robots was going to be a thing like i didn't know <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah uh how y'all doing man how y'all doing on this fine september <laughs> evening uh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I so you guys may or may not recall, but you, you know, like that week, that weekend, I went down to South Carolina to do some house stuff. Mm-hmm. So I actually sold that house today. So I'm, I'm happy. Congratulations, <laughs> sir! Yeah, it's funny because I know like a lot of people are in our age group are trying to like buy buy houses. I was <laughs> desperate to sell the thing. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a headache. But, um, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to worry about that no more. So yo, I I don't know that life, but I've seen aspects of it. Uh, my mom had to sell my great aunt's place in D.C. when she transitioned, and that was like a whole last thing. Yeah, uh, and it's so, yeah. yeah, especially tough when you're not in the state, right? Because you got to get like power of attorney, and so I was was running around doing that today. Because like, well, first of all, the law the law firm that the buyers were, were, were dealing with mm-hmm. they sent me this paperwork on wednesday it was like we need it by friday morning i thought they meant like email scan they meant in person so i'm like dude <laughs> now now they did send me like a overnight fedex like uh shipping label mm-hmm. but even still though like you don't know what somebody's doing and i i literally didn't couldn't do it on wednesday Right. Thursday I tried, but every it, it was just a hassle. So I didn't even get to even send it off until today. And she said, that's fine. You know, I won't get my money from the sale mm-hmm. until next week, which I, I don't even care. I'm just glad I don't have to deal with the house because like it, it it's been a rental property since 20, 2014. Okay. And almost in almost every year they would call or text me, hey, uh, the AC don't work. Or this blah 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 don't work I'm like this house man. It's like every <laughs> every summer I could count on something like just acting up. And the AC unit I know technically we should have replaced it years ago, but I wasn't willing to, to spend that type of money mm. on a house I didn't live in. I'm just so I was just 
put a band-aid on it until next summer, but I'm not I'm not buying a new AC unit. It's not gonna happen. Damn, Adam, so. I, I don't know, man. You kind of sound you sounded like a trash landlord, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like I, I would fix it to where it worked. So uh-huh. I, I mean, if, if if you live in South Carolina, you have to have an AC unit that works because you will burn to death. So it wasn't like it didn't work. It was I, got like, I just wasn't gonna spend six thousand dollars to to get a whole <laughs> new one. Yeah, I feel yeah. That. I feel that. Oh, six thousand dollars I didn't have on a new, whole new one. <laughs> Regardless, it's yeah. just it I just almost sounds like you're like, yeah, man, you are gonna burn, you are gonna burn, you be I right, get some ice. Nah, now nah, I never <laughs> like pretty much every time there was an issue, I definitely I got to fix it immediately because I know like how it feels to be in a house with no AC in South Carolina because sometimes. Mm-hmm. When I lived there, it was going out. I'm like, man, this just having that one night of no AC is like torture. I'm like every fan in the house on. Like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm doing good. That's a long. That was a long update. <laughs> but no, I'm you good. good, Marco. You about to say something? No, I was just saying that man handling his business. <laughs> Great, man Marcel. Selling, <laughs> selling houses. Yeah, <laughs> I, not I, don't, house. I don't know that life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Marco? Yeah. Uh well, despite not feeling the best physically today, uh, just had my had a birthday, had a good time. Right, right. The young man turned thirty-two. Woo! Divine numbers. That's number five right there. Six would be <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Magic but, uh, Johnson. <laughs> just uh. Just, just, you know, having birthdays and <laughs> enjoying life, man. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Your family get you anything in like interesting or uh, 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 that that was like an actually good gift and not one of those bullshitty dad gifts that people get like socks <laughs> or ties well, um, or cufflinks. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we I actually just it was more of an event type birthday, okay, which is what I like to do, right? But, uh, yeah. It was fun though. That's good. Your girl gets you some beard butter. Just dip it in there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, trying to think. Nothing's really going. I'll, I'm, I'm finally like for real, for real, working again, and that shit feels great. Um, <laughs> most of it is still in my house, unfortunately, but. Uh, Dancing in the studio a little bit more just for, uh, uh, for the first time yesterday. And that shit, man, it, you you take for granted being able to move in open space. And uh, <laughs> to the point the a uh, couple of other dancers were there and they were like, yeah, we were kind of, you know, we were kind of roasting you a little bit because you just forgot that we were in the room as you were moving around. So all of our lives were kind of in danger with how much space you chose to consume. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's, it was real fun. Um, but last week, uh, uh, well, I wasn't on when, uh, when y'all recorded because my com- uh, my computer was like on its last leg as it had been for a little minute now. And my hard drive was this close to crashing. And in case you're listening purely, it is about the length of a three rose eyelash. Right. <laughs> uh and so um my my brother helped me uh because he's a computer whiz and whatnot shout out to him and the call a brother call podcast brother. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey if you if you never listen to call a brother it's a great podcast it's really uh really good dudes and by really good dudes i mean jamal i don't really know the other two dudes <laughs> uh jamal's they great <laughs> they, they seem okay except except yeah. that one dude I, I, don't, uh, I don't really care for his segments uh but i don't know him. i don't have like an actual opinion uh <laughs> but the dude that does uh um uh teaching tech moments that's my big bro and uh he uh he showed me uh, he, like walked me through changing my hard drive and i was like oh this must be what like real men feel like when they do shit with their hands and so <laughs> <laughs> uh adam you know that life you build shit and so uh i built a computer too not too long ago and see that's what i'm talking about <laughs> i don't live that life i i, I am it, not teased. it's actually right. way easier than i than i thought it, it sounds and looks intimidating but i just watched a youtube video and it's where it like walks you through the whole you know the hard drive the 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 ram the ram the graphics card all of that yeah yeah 
Mark will not heal his self built one. And the thing is, what yeah, like, in the like midst of doing it, right I now, can't go back now. In the midst of doing it, you're like, oh yeah, oh. this is a really simple thing. You just unscrew this thing and replace this part. But yeah. uh, just looking at like the 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 motherboard or whatever, like mm-hmm. that kind of shit, just looks bananas to me. Uh, yeah. Because I know nothing about it. But otherwise, that's been that's been life. Ain't nothing been necessarily that deep. Uh, so what well, y'all say we jump into it? I don't know about y'all. Uh, Adam threw this in the chat, and I was like, "Oh, I already got like three on deck." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm and I'm a, I'm gonna actually push it a little further than what the original question was. But um, tell me about some of your childhood crushes, right? On some basic shit. This ain't even like a deep topic or nothing like that. But yeah, I, I want to push fine. it a little further and go: Are they still as fine as you considered them when you were a kid? <laughs> I got That's one. Good. Well, that's a good question. I guess I can't think of many right now, but I only the one I got is pretty solid, man. With the okay. Head. So, uh, Boy Meets World, Topinga. And I okay, don't know. Okay, da- Danielle Fischel. Oh, uh, okay. That's her name. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how she's doing these days, but I'm pretty sure she looked the same. Where I, I one up you. Te- 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 Tank was now? cool, but Angela. <laughs> Angela Trina McGee. <laughs> Ooh, that that was she was mine. I was like, oh, okay, because you know, Boy Meets World is the friends equivalent for kids. Uh, where there <laughs> there there were there were black people on it before Angela, but Angela was like the staple of black person. And uh, and mind you, she was like, let me not say the wrong number or whatever, but I'm pretty sure she was like 10 years older than the rest of them when she was in the cast. Yeah. Okay. A lot of shows is weird like that. They try to make these yeah. grown ass people pass for yeah, and it works. Yeah, like, <laughs> and like yeah. if it works, like, it uh, works. What's her name? <laughs> um, Zen- Zen- I want to say I want to say Zendaya for some reason. She played in something. Oh, Spider Man. Like I mean, oh, yeah. well, I would say most of the Spider Man cast actually they're all like adults, but right they're high school kids. Um, I heard about yeah. uh, Go ahead. What blows my mind is is when they do sports movies. And these dudes is like, they've played in like <laughs> three or four high school movies, and they still <laughs> <laughs> they still going strong. Mm-hmm. They're, they're looking like NFL players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that that is a thing with Hollywood is that if you can get casted for younger than you actually are, then you know you get to you get the you get the uh, the adult privileges and whatnot of what's necessary for production, while also being able to push these narratives that people always kind of want of being able to pay attention to these younger people's stories, et cetera. Uh, the, regardless of what the plot is and all of that kind of shit. But um, yeah, to go back to my original thought, Trina McGee is still <laughs> fine to this day. I'm pretty sure she's like 50. Not that that matters at all, but uh, she's still fine to this day. I'll be on her Instagram very much scrolling. <laughs> yeah aj who you got um a lot but i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna stick with um so you i gotta I, say I was, one you can list them all go ahead so I, I was a <laughs> i was a really big fan of, of sister sister back in the day okay Ooh, and i really liked the the, the twins uh T and, and, Tamara. and i forgot which one it is but one of them plays on I want to say plays on not playing a character. No, um, she's one of the hosts of The View. Well, yeah, is it the view show. or it's a uh, it's the other the real? One is it the real? the real? The real. Yeah. That's the real. The view type show. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's the real. Oh, the real, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of that too. I, I, yeah, I don't watch it, but but Kirsten watches it. Uh and I've I've seen like, you know, them talking or whatever. So mm-hmm. she she looks pretty much the same, just adult right. version. So I would say she aged well. Um Another person, and Kirsten knows. I say, I say this uh, per- periodically, uh, but the singer Maya, hmm. <laughs> and um, I was a huge Maya fan back in the day. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure she's she doesn't look like she's aged like maybe maybe ten years since then, right? Because I I used to follow her on, on Instagram, but it, her she like re- is really heavy into like to 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 to, to, to veganism and stuff. Okay, and 
it, and I'm not against it at all, but it just felt like the whole page was a vegan page, which <laughs> so I'm like, okay, right, I'm good. <laughs> so I, I unfollowed, but damn, but yeah, man. That, but I would say, uh, <laughs> like, that's not what I came yeah, here like, for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, for me, it's like when, like, I gotta put it. Like there's there's some some lifestyle decisions that people make that I have no issues with, but after a while, after just once it once it becomes like this is this is the person like you know like then that's when it just gets old to me. It's like okay, like for for example, like and you see it all the time. Like you you check out somebody's page on Instagram and they list these things in like their bio and it'd be mm-hmm. like vegan Christian. Crossfitter, and it, it just lists these things, and that's okay. But I was like, I, I don't personally see why like your diet has to be not not that your diet isn't important, but I feel like people it's not a personality in a group. Like, yeah, people people want to be like in like they want to be a part of something. So it's like I'm a vegan, so you know I'm this I'm a part of this group, you know. And I just when people do that. It's like all right, dude. That's all. Like if you look at my Instagram. Like I kind of make make fun of like that because it's just re- re- just stupid stuff like <laughs> in like my bio is like I'm about to pull it up because I think it's funny, <laughs> but um I like <laughs> I put <laughs> influency omnivore <laughs> and I put my pronouns <laughs> <laughs> he him h n i c then. Account hacked at a hundred million plus, but it, I don't know. It's just I don't, I don't I don't take bio seriously because it's like there's that's not a true bio. It's like what you want people to to know about you, right? But um, but back to the subject. So those are my <laughs> first. Those are probably my top. I was gonna say two, but technically it's three people. So <laughs> say your three again. Just just well, T and Tamara. T and Tamara. Uh, right, that is no, two people. Like the, the exact same. <laughs> um, they are like exactly the same. You can tell the difference. <laughs> well, they don't. They they, don't they are anymore, identical. <laughs> but I would say back back then, to me, they look the same. But mm. but now, not so much. It's a package deal because of the days in the same <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Um, another one that was real heavy for me back in the day was Jessica Alba in Punks. I don't know if y'all remember the movie Punks. It was an old kids film where, uh, truth be told, I don't even remember the whole plot of the movie, but it was, uh, but I just remember <laughs> Jessica Alba was the main girl in it and she was kind of tomboyish and whatnot. But I was like, yo, she's fine as shit. And as she got older, it was real meh. I don't really, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but no, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. All the girls in Saved by the Bell. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, I was going to say Lisa. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Although she looks a lot different now, but I think she has like an illness, so it's you know I'm not gonna judge you on that. God, gotcha, but gotcha. Um, yeah, but but no, I agree with you. What was the one girl's name? I'll say about it. They she were was, all picked uh, well, man. Didn't the black girl die? No, she's the one that had the the illness. Oh, I don't, okay, I don't I know gotcha, what it gotcha. is. Okay, I can't but, remember. Yeah, but I. What was the one with the? I think I think she was blind. I wonder if she was blind. Um, I didn't watch Save the Bell like that. I, I didn't watch it that uh, hard either. Yeah, but when I, I did, I, uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Speak, yeah speaking of, but speaking of childhood finest, this just came to me. Can we just? I, I, maybe you can disagree with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this as if it's a general thought. By all means, disagree. Can we go ahead and agree? That Elmira was finer than Laura on Family Matters. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was obsessed they, with Laura. They they tried to play Laura, play Elmira like she wasn't finer than Laura. Yeah, I always thought that. I thought Laura was a little overrated, to be honest. She was cute and everything, well, but I was like, yo, Elmira's yeah, clearly finer. Well, Urkel hyped her up like no other, so that was <laughs> I mean, that was his that's his whole character though. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, like I don't know. I 
Urkel, that 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 thing in the Urkel plight, I guess that like that's uh excuse me. It, it's one of those like juxtaposition things where, and I'm maybe I'm I hope I'm not using that word wrong. The uh normally, especially for the 90s, the light skinned girl was the one you were pursuing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that she was finer because she was light skinned, I'm saying she's finer because she was finer. Um, but that was nice that he had his heart kind of set on this dark skinned woman, mm-hmm. but the light skinned woman who was more compatible technically with him was the one that he was like, you know, you cool, I do love you, but my heart is set on her. That was cool, but if we just talk about objectively speaking, Elmira was fine and Lauren. Yeah, I agree. I, I always thought that. Yeah. It's funny how like in a, a lot of shows and movies, they'll make somebody like the nerd it was like they're obviously we can still see they're attractive. Like you're not right. You're not really hiding much. <laughs> you can still see. That was one of the funniest episodes when he was Stefan. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I used to love when he when he when they did the little Stefan episodes. Uh huh. If it felt like an exclusive moment, like an exclusive episode, I don't know. Never He's one of those that. cats that I, I feel bad for because I'm like one. Uh, you 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 see all the lore about like Family Matters wasn't supposed to last more than like a season. Yeah, it was yeah. never originally supposed to be like Urkel was never the the lead character. He was never the lead character. Well, not never, but at first, but no, was, <laughs> yeah, in the original casting and whatever, yeah. he was very much supposed to be like there, maybe every like six episodes or something. And oh, I know that the reason why they lasted for however many seasons they did was because of Urkel. Yeah, I, I always thought he was like the main, the the lead. He um, became the he became the lead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I thought that was always the. I didn't yeah. even realize till a few years ago that 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 was a spinoff show. I didn't offer some other show. I didn't never knew that it was a spinoff. I didn't know that at all. I didn't know that either. Yeah, was it, was I, it was Carl the the spinoff character? I don't know. Let me because I never even saw the original show. Um, let me look it up. Hey, look have it. y'all seen uh Key and Peele's um? Urkel skit. Yeah, that was I see that he, I, I, he's like a tyrant, <laughs> like at the <laughs> behind the scenes, like pulling the string. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, like okay. actually gangster. For the for the for the listeners and viewers that didn't know this, Family Matters was a spinoff of the ABC sitcom called Perfect Strangers. Huh. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I, I, I just learned that a few years ago. I wonder how they spin off. I don't know. I don't know who, like, what, you know, what characters yeah. they, they follow, but because mm-hmm. I've never even seen Perfect Strangers. Um, Sound like a if movie. I'm, if I'm not, yeah, it does. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Perfect Strangers, yeah, it, it was a, it was a white cast. So I don't know, like, what characters, you know, who they follow. Yeah. I'm, my, my guess would just have to be, it had to be Carl because Carl, Carl was technically supposed to be like the main character. It and must have been like a, his family. He I must mean, have been like a friend in the cop world or something. And then yeah, kind of did it, spent off of that. So I'm looking at the this photo right now, um, of like the cast and the Carl's wife. I forgot what her name was. She's Harriet. in the she's in the photo. So oh, okay, yeah, so maybe so, it was Harriet. Ah, uh, yeah, yep. This is it's blurry, but. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I never I never knew that till like a few years ago. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I saw this thing that said uh, y'all know Draymond Green. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He said he looked like Waldo from, from <laughs> <Batman>. <laughs> He does look like Waldo. I would have to see it side by side. But uh yeah, I was <laughs> I was gonna say, um, I I always kind of felt bad for Jalil White because it was hard for him to break out of that. To my knowledge, mm-hmm. the only thing he did that was relatively comparable sense was um, he was the voice of Sonic for the cartoon. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't I, uh, I remember I remember him them saying he was trying to get a role on um, on uh, Breaking Bad at one point. But mm-hmm. b- beyond that, I, I don't know of any work he's done really since. Yeah, I, I could have seen him on Walking Dead. Like everybody could get a shot at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. I know. Like at one point of Walking Dead, um, 
all all of the black dudes in Walking Dead had been on the wire at some point. I huh. I, I thought that was super interesting. Like um Terrell. Yeah. Uh, all of like every black man that had been on the Walking Dead. I don't know I don't know if that's the case now because it's been going on for 30 seasons, but at one point all of the black dudes had been on the wire at some point. So, hmm. Some 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 of them might have been on the wire at the same time, which is cool. Hmm. Um yeah. I got I got something to admit. I've never watched The Walking Dead. Yeah, I mean, I would say you're not missing anything, but it actually legitimately was good yeah. for like the first for me at least, it was good for like the first five, five or six seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then after that, you know, I kind of lost interest. Um yeah. Zombie apocalypse uh happens. What what you think you're gonna do? You think you think you think you're gonna really fight to survive? You're gonna protect your family, or you're like, nah, I'm good, and just off yourself right there. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I want the challenge. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm strapping up. I'm yeah. gearing up. <laughs> I mean, I already have post apocalyptic weapons that I made. Uh, <laughs> not for that. It was for right. it was for a, it was for a photo shoot, but I still have the the props. Yeah, I'm calling them props, but they're very, very real yeah. weapons. <laughs> like they could do some damage. Um, I really, I really want the video game or the like movie scene where they use that pizza cutter as an actual weapon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, the, the thing about that is it looks cool, but it's really heavy. So I'm it sure wouldn't be ve- it wouldn't be very practical. Like you get one swing because trying to re- <laughs> trying to recover from that swing is like you know you're you're out of it already. So you- <laughs> but if you connect on that first swing. Zombie human, they're going down. It don't matter. That thing's it got some denseness to it. <laughs> I definitely I when I'm in like uh like Lowe's or whatever, Menards, I'm looking at mm-hmm. stuff like thinking about <laughs> that. Like, yeah, that'll yeah. be good right there. It, man, like, it's so <laughs> it's so fun. Like just making stuff out of stuff that it's not intended to be is like it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. I haven't well, made I anything wanna, this year, but yeah. I wanna say that I that I'll fight. And maybe for a little bit, mm-hmm. but at a certain point, really, I, I I'll fight until I get hungry. <laughs> hey, and sometimes, then be- like in The Walking Dead, it does get like, oh, again, like it's another herd of these zombies, like another, yeah. <laughs> like even though some, you know, most of the scenes is good, mm-hmm. but sometimes it it'll be a low moment, and that's like an automatic, like it bring the <laughs> the morale up, so. down. I feel I'm like, just like that, like, oh, I'll throw in another herd. Like, oh, okay. I'm, I, and I'm just like, for what? Like, what, what's the end goal here? Is it just to live? And if it is, then live to aspire to what? Because if the extent of my dreams is tomorrow, <laughs> eh, I like, I, I, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know that I care that much. I, I think, I think the whole like the goal is to kind of reestablish some type of uh, community yeah. or, you know, society. And that's, that's kind of like what the walking dead is about actually. Yeah. Like and how, how do we remain like, and then it show so, like how it's changed so much that like, you can see like good people like kill other people. So right. It's like mm-hmm. kind of crazy in that way. Yeah. Cause it turns from like, it turns from like, this battle against human versus zombie to essentially human versus human, which yeah. to me, that was the best element about it because mm-hmm. I feel like that would be real. Yeah. That, that seems realistic because, because people are people and, you know, people are going to see how they can get over on other people and, you know, for example, and perfect example is COVID-19, you know, when this thing broke out, whatever, you know, people were in stores, buying up all the toilet tissue and it was a very survivalist mentality and everybody was like instead of just getting you what know you need, enough yeah. you know people were like nope i'm stocking up i'm stocking up on all this stuff <laughs> so and i think if there was something like really i'm not saying covid 19 is life-threatening but if, if it was something like that was causing people to die and come back to life you know i think we, we would really see some some craziness <laughs> out there <laughs> And I, and I just don't get, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't know. I can... Like I said, I'll fight till I'm hungry. And then I'm going to go, so what are we going to do? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody cooking at Culver's right now. So <laughs> I, 
I'm sure the grocery stores are barren gotta, or we got to learn how to plant, plant, <laughs> plant food again. <laughs> yeah. And how am I get out to the garden? I'm saying, how am I, how am I going to get out to my garden to, to get said bell peppers and, <laughs> and shit? If, 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 if squash, <laughs> <laughs> if I gotta, ha- I gotta have the, the, the sawed off in order to go pick my fruit. <laughs> like, ah, I'm, and maybe, maybe the zombies find that they like, Tomatoes better than eating. <laughs> end of end of the show. <laughs> Be on some. Uh, uh, I don't know if y'all ever watched uh, True Blood. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they got like pretty much V eights of blood. Uh, yeah, as the supplement, and so like it, maybe you know they have like brain brownies or something like that for zombies or some shit. And you think that's gonna be like a, a the? I, I don't know. I don't know. I want. I want. The, I want the situation where zombies have a uh, mental agency. I think that's. I think okay. that's the story that the story that hasn't been told. Like zombies that can think for themselves, and they're like, "Yo, I don't. I don't want to have to kill you. Just, just give, me, just give me like the math section of your brain, and we'll be good." <laughs> that's what I was about to say. Like what. That would be it depend on what what type of zombies we going against. Like, if it's the one from that, uh, what's that movie with Brad Pitt? The uh, uh, War War Z. Z. yeah. War Z. If it's the War ones War from War that, War like, we probably yeah, in trouble. Yeah. Like, yeah, not even probably. <laughs> or I Am Legend, like, we yeah. out of there. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like the I Am Legend zombies. Uh, what was it? Le- leader cognizant zombie literally stood there next to the glass, like. I don't have anywhere else to be yeah. except right here to fuck <laughs> you up. Like, well, for no reason. Yeah. Because I can't. What's that scene <laughs> where they was... I can. What's that scene happened where they was messing with him in that building? Like, and he came out there and yelled at him afterwards? Oh, because... Like, of, man, uh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> like, uh, Because his, his mannequin his mannequin friend was, like, on the other side of the street. And yeah. Like, Yo, how the fuck did you get out here? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let's, I was trying to find a segue out of this. Uh, <laughs> um, we got off of like five different topics. Yeah. <laughs> what is cool? Uh, well, uh, so on, here, here's a bit of a segue. So I was saying um, the st- we, we almost kind of have stereotypical uh zombie nature now in the same ways that like true blood has this thing and i i, I just started watching true blood for the first time recently because my, my girl wanted me to watch it so i'm oh, okay. um things that i things that i don't care for uh ho- i did not realize homegirl was a girl that played rogue in the first x-men series and i'm immediately disappointed yeah. um <laughs> i hate the way she runs i hate <laughs> how the main dude constantly looks through his eyebrows as if he doesn't know how to look straight uh and <laughs> those are just a couple of things i do think routine routine wesley is fine as shit she always has been um oh uh, i had to think about who, who you're talking about yeah. the black woman <laughs> yeah um and i was a little sad that lafayette is like dead in real life i'm like he's great on this show he clearly should have had yep. a much longer career and like yeah uh, but I say all that to say I like how they uh, dismantled um, all these kind of like stereotypes that the uh, that the movies and all that shit have done toward vampires, and say like, okay. okay, for real, for real, stakes in the heart that you jam wood into any part of me, I'm gonna die. But <laughs> everything else is bullshit. And why haven't zombies had that opportunity? Or is there any other like? folklore science fiction fantasy whatever have you that you're like these things have gotten a bad rep or we know the this particular information about this subject i want to know this about it though do you anything like that ever cross your mind Mm. wait wait say that explain that again okay so like uh in regard uh what true blood did with like vampires right they were like the thing about the thing of how to kill us that's true but if uh but as far as like garlic crosses bibles 
all of that shit, mirrors, n- none of that is real. I can see myself in a mirror, garlic. It's, it's, it's annoying. I don't like the taste, yeah. but it's not going to fuck with me. Uh, <laughs> and so like what I was saying in regards to zombies, zombies are always mindless, uh, insatiably hungry for human flesh or brains and uh for some reason fully possess the ability to run but never to run without flailing violently (laughs) (laughs) and so like it like i don't know to see like a uh to see usain bolt zombie (laughs) <laughs> or zombie Usain Bolt, like, like, what are these stories to like, kind of like dismantle a stereotype that you would like to see towards some fiction, fiction as we know, fictional shit? Okay, yeah. I'm trying to think of a fictional character that I that if we saw that today, like if if all of a sudden zombies were real, and of course you know people being the way people are, they're gonna be like kill all of them. All they want to do is kill us, and zombies have to now like get on TV and try to like lobby shit. And they're like, "No, no, no, we don't actually want to fuck with y'all. Like, we're cool. <laughs> like, brains are delicious and shit like that. But you know, I can I can just go kill a sheep. Like, y'all not gonna eat the brain anyway. Like, you're just gonna throw it away. So let me just get that sheep brain. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> um. I don't know. I'm stumped. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't. I'm, <laughs> that might have like, been too deep. Too, I don't know. <laughs> that was too, I don't know. I, nothing. Nothing came to my. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying. To, I was just trying to think about like fiction, fictional beings or. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to even think of another one besides those. Like my brain is just stuck on those two. Uh, like, a- like like aliens, zombies. aliens are always a thing. Oh and yeah, I, they they have tried to do that as far as aliens because aliens get to be more broad, and they're like, yo, we have no interest in sticking things up your butt. Like that's not <laughs> a thing. we yeah. Uh, what what yeah. if yeah? What if like uh, like I get your concept now. Like <laughs> like what if angels really didn't have wings? They just floated around or something. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they oh, just look like you, uh, <laughs> they just like flying squirrels. Like they really just glide everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a Batman suit. <laughs> uh, we just glid down from the from the cloud. <laughs> Is that now, the way to conjugate that? Glid. I think it's glided. Glided. I don't know. That's all. I, I really don't know. I was asking. <laughs> glowed. Glowed. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the interesting thing about the angel thing, though, there, there is a show called um. Lucifer. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it actually does. It is a little. It's not. They do kind of like play on that, where it's not necessarily what you would think. Like, um, the main character being the devil, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he like it's interesting because you would think, oh, he's he's devil, he's evil, he's bad, but they, he actually is the good guy of the show, right? And it's kind of cool how you. they. Yeah, it's kind of cool how they transform that. And like, yes, he is a devil. And yes, he does. He owns his nightclub and they do drugs and they do all the sinful things. But they paint him as he has a good heart. And it's kind of interesting how they how they, you know, because they because a show with that title, you would think I don't want to watch a show called called Lucifer. But then I just watched it and they was like, OK, it's actually, you know. Mm. I'm not saying it's the best show ever or anything, but it's entertaining. It's one of those shows where it's like, okay, I, I wouldn't mean, recommend it's Fox. It to anybody. Yeah. Does anybody you ever have high expectation of shows on Fox? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's like one of those shows where like, it's a, it's definitely something that entertains me, but I'm not like, man, this is like, this mm-hmm. is like Breaking Bat level, you know, <laughs> writing. Yeah. But it's so it's not like so. Just to add to that point, it's cool how they and and it's not just him. There's other characters that are celestial you know beings right, right. like his brother Cause obviously because lucifer you know was an angel so right. he has br- brothers and siblings that were angels and and it's cool because they're not 
because he's a white guy, but all of his siblings aren't aren't white. Mm-hmm. He has a, a a black brother. He has a I think he has a sister that's Asian. And so it's cool how they like they don't do what you think they would do. So mm-hmm. you know. Hmm. So that that's is a, an example of that. Yeah, that's a uh, word. That that's probably the best. Um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, advocation for that show I've heard because uh, I because I I don't know nothing is necessarily interests me about it. I I got the I got what the concept yeah. is probably supposed to be. Um, mm-hmm. but I was like <sighs> another Fox show where they you know try to flip something and I'm like I don't know that I care. And that kind um, of reminded <laughs> reminded me of um American Gods. Yeah, yeah. watch that. Yeah, I did. I. I started watching it. I didn't finish. I just yeah. got I got too lost. I like I'm so lost. The storyline <laughs> isn't really that strong. Okay. Yeah. I, Honestly, I, I, I think didn't I got finish it either. But I I, I had about four, four episodes in. It was just mm. the story. I was a little more complicated to follow, but I just more so enjoyed certain uh, scenes and stuff like that. Yeah. Orlando Jones made that show. Yeah. He had to without be without him, it makes no sense. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and and truthfully, I could actually I can break down even though I don't remember like the minutia of it all. I can break down American guys. They the, uh, the old the old the old gods, you know, uh, the uh, Nordic Christian, all that kind of stuff. All of those gods uh, are in are in a war of sorts with today's gods of technology social media etc and they're afraid that one uh if the whole thing is if no one prays to you you die that's the only way to kill a god Hmm. and as social media and all that kind of stuff grow all these old gods are being forgotten and so they're trying to you know help their religion to continue to exist and so odin i don't like that actually yeah, Odin. Uh, ha- Odin has a uh has a son that he never got in contact with because you know all or all or old Nordic gods used to come down and fuck humans, and so he's a uh, uh he has a demigod son whose name is Moon something. It's the same uh, as Thor. That's huh? a, it's a Thor Thor story. Yeah, it's the same as Thor story or yeah. Hercules or any of them. Or right? insert here. And so uh, that's really what the whole first season is about, is he's trying to get uh, his son to believe that gods exist. And if he can do that, it helps him stay alive. Okay. At least, or at least helps okay. him. And so uh, it's, it's an interesting show. The, the graphics and yeah, everything are cool. Interesting. Uh, but the, the, <clears throat> the, the writing is hit or miss. I love Orlando Jones and everything Orlando Jones did in it. Um, yeah, me, yeah. With the exception of right after his first speech, that horrific spider that they showed take up the whole screen, that right there, I could live without. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, <laughs> he's great. Um, and especially because I knew I knew some stuff about Anansi back in the day, because that's an old African guy. Um, and so it was cool to like rewrite Anansi in this way because he is a trickster god, yada yada yada. Um but yeah, it's a it was an interesting show. I'm probably not going to watch it because of the whole Orlando Jones fiasco. Um, yeah, and did he yeah. get like fired or something? He uh, yeah. he got let go because a new showrunner had just got on. And mind you, uh, apparently all of Orlando Jones's monologues he wrote. He wrote that, yeah. And so, um, yeah, what happened was a new showrunner got on who. It's pretty much, you know, some crunchy white dude who uh, who probably took an African-American studies course at some point in college. And he told Orlando <laughs> Jones, the black community does not need this kind of rhetoric and character. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is it's interesting. They, <laughs> for, for one. I mean, who are you to say that? For a second, I mean, it's. I mean, it's TV though. It's not like he's trying to. He's not trying to. I don't know. I think he's I not think starting he, a revolution. The market. It's it's a character. Yeah, it's just a t- TV show. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, I I 
adore both of the, both of his major monologues, but I'm like, mm-hmm. are what about what about these monologues? Do you actually have an issue with? Because yeah. him telling slaves to burn this motherfucker down, excuse me, huh? is a real thing. Y'all, you good? And him talking about how often um, little girls get snatched up. Which, what about either of these narratives? Do you actually have an issue with? Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, <laughs> it was wild shit. Uh, I watched a couple of interviews where he was talking about it, uh, but uh, I also watched him in Biker Boys, and he is hilarious. <laughs> uh, I honestly couldn't tell you that many Orlando Jones things that I didn't care for. Yeah, even the even him as the hard ass and Drumline. I was like, I like say, I like say, was he in Drumline? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, it just hit me like he used to. <laughs> I always rem- that scene when he was like, they were, when they're like at some, at, they're at the at a game and he and he tells them to play like the the Bumblebee song. I forgot what it was. Uh huh. Fly the Bumblebee. That scene always, <laughs> yeah, that scene always sticks out in my mind for some reason. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, Mad TV was my show for a little while, man. Yeah, Even Mad TV some, used to be great. Some of them were not that good, but when it was good, it was That's great. Show, it was yeah. like. And he was good in there. He was funny. I forgot that was where he started, to be honest. You are you are right about that. Yeah. Oh, shit. You can go back and Man. watch some of those. I completely forgot that. It's, I think it's on um Disney, not Disney, uh HBO Max. Oh, that's the that's the one service I ain't got. Now you gonna share that password, I'll take it. But uh <laughs> I, I might hook you up. Might oh yo, <laughs> I need that. That way I can <laughs> I can stop pirate in Lovecraft country. I know you probably uh, got one of my anime. <laughs> let me give one of them anime uh, codes. <laughs> oh, I got you. Um, well, I I I'm uh, what is it? You know, I don't, I don't pay for shit, but I, that's not true. I do pay for some shit, but uh, we can cut this. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can hook you up with some some, some good sites. Um, right. but um, yeah yeah. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, we're past that. Never mind. RP um, pirating. <laughs> man, I miss the good days of pirating. Good old Me torrents. <laughs> Bit torrent. Bit torrent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Na- when Napster was free. Uh, LimeWire. FrostWire. I stayed away from LimeWire. That's how y'all kept getting them Trojans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. I, I lucked out with LimeWire. Pirate Bay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I miss those days. kids would never know. <laughs> Mike wouldn't. Know. Uh, I accidentally had a time. Um, <laughs> we here, here's a here's a subject. You ever um you ever brag about something and immediately realize this is not the person you should be bragging about this to? Yeah, I, I, I I'm, I'm sure bragging about. Um, so like there was a situation where I was meeting some old head jazz musicians and whatnot, and they were just talking about like, you know, the music industry ain't what it used to be, yada, yada, yada. And their beefs were streaming. I have beefs with streaming. I get that. Uh, and I was like, yeah, man, when I was younger, I used to be able to just get hundreds of songs and not pay for any of <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, yeah, <laughs> you got to know we're all working musicians. This is not the audience you should be saying that to. And I was like, ah, you're right. <laughs> but it wasn't your music. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I never did. I never, I never pirated um, local stuff. That's not true. I used to pirate a lot of Lupe. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I was never. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I never pirated like on like on this level, and they're and they're technically like world renowned jazz musicians, and, but I'm like I didn't know your catalog like that. <laughs> Did yeah, y'all ever have an experience like that? That'd be all right. I it's funny, you know what's funny? I was actually gonna put this in the chat, but it's it's slightly different. I was gonna I was gonna ask. Have you ever actually think I did? You I did. I, did. I, I was like, um, have you ever have you ever texted anybody something embarrassing or something? Mm-hmm. And I guess it's similar to that. I actually have two stories. Go for it. And I, I <laughs> one of them was <laughs> so so 
one of them, I was helping, see if I can get this right. I was helping my mother-in-law's boyfriend and sister move. That's a lot of apostrophe. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, she, and she was, actually, we were, we were putting, putting her stuff in storage. I think she was living in the Highland at the time and we were mm-hmm. moving her stuff to Waukegan, okay. uh, to the store, storage unit out there. So, you know, yeah. So I was driving with her brother. So I was driving with her brother in the U-Haul. She was driving her her car or whatever with some other guys or whatever. So we drive out there. We unload the truck. On the way back, well, we, we dropped the U-Haul truck off in Waukegan. Then we drive in her car on the way back. So we're driving through from Waukegan to, to back to Gary. Obviously, we have to go through Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're driving, and I didn't realize she was... So we've all been on the Dan Ryan and you have that that one person that goes flying past, switching lanes, in and out of lanes. Right. Okay. So she's that driver. I didn't realize that. <laughs> so <laughs> we're so we're flying down the road and she's just just you know, just 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 doing it up. So <laughs> I text Kirsten, I'm like, well, so I text Kirsten, I was like, what I said, I was like, this chick is driving like a damn fool. And then I look at the scent. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> it was to her. So I'm in the car and I sent what I thought was sending, sending, sending the Kirsten. It sent to, her, you know, my mother-in-law, boyfriend, sister. But she didn't see it until like later. So I'm just I'm just waiting <laughs> for her to see the text message that I just sent her. <laughs> and then, so it's just like this. We were, we're real awkward because I don't, I don't know her that well either. Mm-hmm. I think that was like the second time I ever met her. So I was like, I don't even know if it's somebody. So why did you have a number? Well, well, I was helping her move. So ah, like, right. we were contacting so, each yeah, other. Yeah. So, and she was the last person to text because for whatever reason. So anyway, so I text her that. And then I was like, man, I got to figure out how to, how to like deflate this. So when she <laughs> does see it. So I was like, so I was like, but she was killing it though. <laughs> <laughs> Like saying like, <laughs> like you're driving like a fool, but <laughs> but you're killing it as you're doing it. That's the only thing I could think to say. And she just laughed, but I'm sure she was like, I'm sure she like, yeah, you didn't mean to send that to me. Like, yeah, I mean, it, that, it, was, it takes it, it takes awkward. a bigger person to realize that. But that's <laughs> yeah. a great follow yeah. up. Don't think that that was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it was awkward, man. And like I still get like re- re- reminded of that all the time by like. Kirsten's mom, whatever, because like, because everybody was told the story eventually. Like, mm. so everybody knows the story now. It was just now it's just kind of like a running, you know, running joke. But but it was interesting because she actually picked me up from the airport when I went to South Carolina, like my mom. This last time, because her and yeah, so her, her and her, her brother or Kirsten's mom's boyfriend, they are they are already in Chicago at the time, so they picked me up. I'm like, here we go again. But she actually wasn't that crazy probably because of she remembered you know the situation. situation that happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> so she t- toned it down a little bit um so yeah, it was hilarious. funny yeah but I've, I've done that twice where i text the wrong person in the room mm-hmm. i'll tell the, the other story it's even shorter so this guy that i met when i was in jordan this was like 2013 okay i met him when we were deployed in jordan and um so we got cool or whatever. He's a cool guy, or whatever. And he was like, when we got back, he's like, "Hey, I have, I'm having this this thing at my house. You know, he stopped by." I was like, "All right, cool." So uh, I go over there, and he had there's a bunch of family over there, which is fine. But I was expecting it to be like people in my age group, not mm-hmm. like his old parents and aunts and <laughs> little. You know, I was expecting like a young, younger person to get right. together. So my other friend that was coming. Later, I text him, or so I thought I was texting him. I was like, "Hey, man, don't worry about coming. It's kind of whack. It's just family." And then I like, "Crap! I just sent it to the guy." <laughs> and he's like, "Man, I get it. Like, it's cool." <laughs> he was really understanding, but I was like, "Man." So now I I make sure I check before I hit send. Like, let me make sure this is the right person because I have a history of sending stuff to the wrong person. Very embarrassing stuff. So. See, the thing yeah. is, I I. 
I'm trying to remember. I, I I'm usually pretty good. I probably fucked up a lot more when I was younger. Uh, but <laughs> I I say so much salacious shit that I really got to make sure I know who that recipient is. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I got caught up in a Zoom call. Uh, we I was in a teacher's orientation for the summer program this past summer. And there was a new guy that was being brought in and whatnot. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, we all, most of us are kind of sitting like this. I may be on my couch or something like that. But excuse me, if it's a teacher's orientation, we all see each other, even though we're looking at the document or whatever. And this dude, none of us really know him. None of us have that much pre-exposure to him. He got referred, yada, yada, yada. And he's like in his bed laid out in the middle of the meeting and so i'm thinking uh because uh one of the other teachers me and me and him had been like chatting each other and i and and i this before i knew that the host gets everything in the chat if this thing is being recorded and so uh <laughs> like now i know like if you go and text somebody in the middle of a zoom call just just text them like don't send private messages through the chat because the host will see anything that you would have that you wrote um, we're texting back and forth. And at some point I had to text everybody again. So I switched it back to text mm-hmm. everybody, but I forgot to switch it back to only him when I sent okay. my next <laughs> message, which was, uh, <laughs> he, and he, he starts talking and they were like, you know, are you, uh, how are you feeling? And he was like, well, it's a new job. And so, you know, always feeling kind of nervous with that stuff. But mind you, as he's saying that he's like back here, Holding the phone up to his <laughs> face on the couch, uh, <laughs> like in the and I and I text my dude. I was like, "Yo, for somebody who's nervous, he is really comfortable." <laughs> 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 and I real and I then I I looked and I saw that it said sent to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they agree. <laughs> And, and the thing was, you saw, and you could see everybody's eyes see the message. And yeah. <laughs> I ain't never sweat so fast. Cause <laughs> I was like, oh, damn, like shit. Like we all kind of family ish, but this is supposed to be like uber professional. And yeah. so <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to get chewed out after this. I just know, I just know <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get fired before this shit even starts. Uh, <laughs> and. Like shortly after, he was like, "All right, so I gotta go," <laughs> and he got he got <laughs> off the call before the call was even over. And I was like, "Come on!" And then I had to like go Dang. tell him. I, I I had to really like tell myself, even though I knew it was an accident. I was like, eh, "In real life, I don't feel bad because yeah. why? Man, it's true. <laughs> like it, it's true. Yeah. Like you, come on, you're being rude." And so yeah. yeah. Uh, that was probably the last time some shit like that happened to me. Well, I got, well, I got one thing that's weird. And then I got an actual situation, but like my, whenever every phone I get, like for some reason, when I call my cousin, my little cousin, it goes to somebody else (laughs) every time. Or like when when he calls or I, I call him back and then it goes to somebody, a specific person that's like weird. Like how are these things linked? But anyway, uh, I got this one situation or this, I remember this time where th- this was back when I um, used to indulge in the, in the uh, cannab- cannabis. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, Where's this going? Cannabinoids, yeah. yes. <laughs> Cannabinoids. <laughs> the, the, the THCs, if you will. <laughs> uh, but I had let one of my friends use my phone. So that's already, you know, a setup mm-hmm. right there. <laughs> and he sent a text uh, to, to a dealer, I guess, you know. So he's, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Like, okay, you know, that's what you... He trying to he trying to pick up some so he sent it to I don't and I don't know how like he sent it to one of my family members and it was like real specific like <laughs> I forgot what exactly it said but it's like it's blatantly 
a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I got the phone back and I'm just looking at it like, how am I going to spend this? Like, how, <laughs> how do you spend this? Like, <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. And somehow I did, like I made it about, I don't, I don't even, I wish I remember the specifics, but it yeah. probably didn't actually work, but I felt yeah. like it did. <laughs> yeah. They probably <laughs> like, like it was right. just like the next uh, text was like, well, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to say. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's the thing you always want to hope is that like when, if you know you're trying to spend some shit that you know you actually don't have a way out of, then you're like, oh well, whatever we get out of this, we'll be get out of it. Yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know if I told this story on the podcast, but uh, I remember my mom. I had already moved out, and she found some old rubbers in a drawer of my old dresser. Have I told this on the podcast already? I think, but I mean, who knows when? Like, we it, 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 it can retell it. We, we might have and, new listeners. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you heard this already, I got other stories, but this Y'all is the one that comes to hearing it again. <laughs> uh, my mom found my found my mom found these two old you know school school uh distributed condoms in my drawer <laughs> after i moved out and so i came back to grab some more clothes and whatnot and she was like uh she she like pulled them out of her pocket like do you need these and i was like <laughs> <laughs> and i was like uh uh no nah, ma uh i'm i'm celibate you know, <laughs> sell a bit oh, yeah. over here, sell a bit over there. Why oh, you think I ain't asked you for money in so long? <laughs> <laughs> Man, Damn, I probably have a lot with like with, with with my parents. Like, yeah, I'm sure I do. I'm not sure which one I would want to tell them. I mean, yo, <laughs> I, I've lied so much over my life. Uh, I don't, I don't lie anymore. Uh, I, I abandoned my lying ways uh, about four years ago. I know that my okay. eyes didn't didn't really, wasn't really convincing, but, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I I can't even keep track of like all the shit that I used to do and say back in the day. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> but if man like that that age where like you're like. In high school, like that, but that, like that, younger high school age, like fourteen mm-hmm. ish, fifteen, is like it's crazy how like easy it is to get into something that you know you're not supposed to be doing, right? And it's like you almost always get caught. It's like it's uh, it's just an interesting part of your life because <laughs> you're you're getting access to shit, but you don't know what to do with it, and especially yeah. don't know how to finagle your way out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every almost every experience is like the first time second time <laughs> right yeah yeah and especially back then like especially when like technology was like i'm not saying it first came out but like it was becoming oh it, it made a heavy transition yeah. throughout yeah. our lives <laughs> yeah yeah that's true i feel like kids these days they're gonna be able to hide what they're doing a lot easier oh yeah just like one they're just there's just more tech savvy and this there's just like and pa- like making something password protected or you know fingerprint face whatever uh yeah all of that shit is just more easily accessible technology today yeah yeah it's like everything is i mean now in one device like i guess when we before like phones took off like that like we used to have to carry a camera a calculator whatever you know now it's yeah. really, really everything in one device. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and the kids know how to work it. Work growing up, very, you, very easily. <laughs> you can, you can make, produce, watch, protect, and uh, probably some other adjective that I can't think of right now. Porn, all in the same device, easily. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And, and and cameras these days have gotten so good on phones. Like, yeah, it would actually be, be decent quality too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just the fact that, uh, like you can control your house. 
oh, yeah, with remotely. Your phone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And answer yep. your door and like that's Smart that's house. stuff that used to like amaze us in movies. Like right. 007, yeah, like spy that kids. Like, oh, this some double seven, like. Spy kids, yeah. Uh, yeah, smart house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah smart house. <laughs> yeah. There's a movie I on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but um I forgot what it was called, but it was about a smart house essentially. This rich guy, and he <clears throat> I don't know if he kidnaps women or he just invites them to, to his house or something, and they have to it's essentially they're they're essentially become a prisoner, but he's not even there. They're a prisoner to the house, but it's the way his house is set up is like it's like heavily it's like it's like a prison essentially, but it's like technology and this person is trying to escape this house and it's just it's really interesting. I forgot what it was called, but um hmm. essentially th- th- this woman is trying to escape this smart house, but it's really difficult because it's tech it's this woman versus technology. So but it, it's I thought it was interesting. It's like very like modern home and just I wish I knew, I knew what it was called, but I don't. But um I don't know. Well, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> hmm. I was gonna to say that throw it in the uh throw it on the post. Yeah. I'm sure the smart house can make smoothies now. Because in, <laughs> in the movie, it had a hard how do, time. <laughs> how do y'all feel about um like smart house devices? I don't like I don't, I, I like the idea of things being easier or like uh, interfaces n- knowing uh, your tendencies to a certain extent. But then it, it's kind of scary how like the, the network that we built with uh, Google and uh, everything, everything mm-hmm. that we use is like how powerful it can be. Like even the, the fact that we know that that's what these companies are out here using all their money on is collection of data. Right. It, that's what scares me about the AI is that, you know, they're going to try to do something crazy soon. And it's yeah. going to be, to me, I think they're just going to slowly implement things like, like they're doing. I know we talked about already, like what they're doing with the, uh, the social system in China. Mm-hmm. It's like once they start doing stuff like that, then that's that's kind of scary to me. <laughs> I'm with you. I I want to like stuff like you know Google Home, Alexa, and all of that, but I'm just I just be like, eh, I already barely ever say hey Google to my phone. Don't you do it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but like stuff like that, uh. Some device that um that I guess was supposed to be a thing came from my Facebook memories called a I think it was called a Weibo or something like that, and it was like a little little Johnny Five looking robot that like <laughs> blinks and talks and responds with opinions. And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't need that in my house. Yeah. So yeah. It, <clears throat> it makes me think about a black uh, episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it was like some assistant or something like that. And it put like the guy, or it was what was it? It was like some guy. It makes like a clone of you or something, and then it's like that clone of you is your assistant mm. or something. I forgot. What I, don't, it was. I don't remember it this episode. Like, yeah, it was weird. I don't know why I don't remember this episode. That's weird. I think. Uh, like, I think. I think the guy died, and and she bought like a. Uh, um, Android version of him or something like that. Okay. Hmm. I, I just know it's like it's like a mini version of you and it's like supposed to be like your assistant or something. Maybe I'm he, making that maybe this that's something. The one I'm remembering song. is like he died, he might have died in a crash or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he got she ordered one of him and then it just wasn't the same because she was just like he was I know what you're like talking saying, about. you know, program stuff or whatever. Yeah, right. She was yeah, like I know, yeah, I know what episode you're talking about. I'm, I'm thinking of a different one. I think the one you're talking about where like they lived and like the house was like on this cliff almost. It felt like it was like not a cliff, but it was like this big on a mountain pasture, like okay. pasture. I don't know. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. But I know what episode you're talking about. Like they were like in a bathtub, like 
you put them in the bathtub and then yeah. like, it grows to full size. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm thinking of a different one, but I, I got to rewatch the whole series over, yeah. honestly. Eventually, Cause yeah. Because I, I, get, I get episodes mixed up sometimes. Hey, have y'all seen... Um, they they made this robotic um, that, that looks very human-like, but the AI that they use is so sophisticated. I think her name is like Sophia. But uh, they they had them talking to each other, and it's just interesting how the dialogue between two, you know, systems. I like think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and also, they did this experiment. Uh, with it was a whole nother thing, but they let these these um. I guess I think the word it uses operating systems or some type of AI uh, response system, but they let these computers talk to each other and they started developing their own language. So they were saying like, this is the dangers that it proposed because once the, once they become, I guess you would use the word conscious of sentient. Yeah. Sentient that they, that they know their their creation and they're they're talking to each other you know they start to build defense systems and that's mm-hmm. they say that that's a def, that's a form of a defense system to create their own language so you don't know what they're saying right so that that's like that's wild to me yeah i don't it's almost it's almost as if like no one has ever seen a sci-fi movie ever and you're <laughs> like, like stop making was- them smarter that was either a Google or a Facebook. One of those, it used one of those uh, systems, and they they immediately shut it down after they noticed yeah. that. But that's just... A, it's like, go the, ahead, Adam. It's like, the thing with AI, and the thing that we all know about it, even if you're not, even if you don't know that much about AI, the whole point of it is for them to gain knowledge and to get smarter. That's like, that's what intelligence is, is the ability yeah. to learn <laughs> i think right. they want to like, fall they want to fall back on saying like well they only do what we program them to do. tell them yeah but at the same and, time we <laughs> we give them programs that are far beyond our our speed of calculation or boundaries as one person you know as yeah. much as we you know we may think we are or we are a collective consciousness these computers work at a high efficiency like <laughs> they they are programming program programming them to do things that we don't need them to do so it's like that's crazy about that argument about how, how they program them that's I, not a cool. I, i'm sure i've said it before on this podcast and i will say it a goddamn again stop making robots smarter <laughs> stop making the, it has been we, we already had the conversation about uh you know fictional characters and what we could change about their stereotypes and shit and this is one of those things where i'm like no no no. all these things are potentially true because the first thing all ai does always is try to build like marcus just says some kind of self-defense coping mechanism or whatever and then eventually figure out humans are absolute uh, are obsolete yeah, they might say, "Hey, they they're a failing race." You know, <laughs> we might as well yeah, get rid of them. It's like, we, yeah, because with them, all the information, okay. I'm saying, like, with all the information that they, because, like you said, they make, I guess you could say, decisions. I, I mean, they make decisions based on information. Calculations, so more so. Exactly. So if they're calculating, <laughs> so if they're looking at mankind and how we're living, like calculating. The fact that the temperature, the Earth's temperature is getting hotter every year, and all right. these details, like, well, my calculations tell me they only have 175 years left on this planet, and like, I don't know, it's just like, it's just, it's just interesting that they continue to do this, <laughs> like, because that I, mean, makes sense. I think that's what, well, a lot of movies actually, but I think that's what I Robot really was saying pretty good. Mm. Like about like yeah, I gotta rewatch that one. Yeah, I, I don't remember really anything. 
I well, one, of, one of the scenes yeah. was actually that exactly. It was like uh, it saved. Well, the whole thing was the robot saved him instead of a little girl. And he was mad because oh. the robot was like, you know, is a 79 whatever percent chance uh, he will survive. But it's like a very low 20 whatever it was. And yeah, I remember that scene. It was that type of like ethical thing. Hmm. So they they yeah. they work on logic, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. So it was right. Well, yeah. I guess you could program them with other, you know, intentions or whatever. But that but was you, the idea of what they were saying. But I get uh, emotions are a humanoid trait. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say humanoid trait. It's a it's a sentient trait. Based on, uh, uh, it's, uh, let me even put it a little more specific. It's an, uh, I'm sure there's another word. It's, it's, uh, it's a sentient trait of organic life forms. But you know what's crazy though? Like, just, uh, just by using probability or just like uh odds in uh statistics you can you can kind of not not that i'm saying you can predict what a human is going to do but you can look at a pattern and and i i honestly think if is if if is a uh, if there's if there's androids out here that are that are physically, you know, you can't tell the difference. Like like if you go into a wax museum and they look kind of like that or better, mm -hmm. I don't think that most of us will be able to tell if they are just just by how advanced the they are socially now. Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, I, uh, that 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 veers off a bit. I was mainly saying that. As far as far as decision making, people usually are making their decisions based on some level of calculation, as well as uh, influence of whatever their emotional capacities are toward a thing, whether that be sympathy, empathy, etc. Right. But but look at all the AI that we use knows us to that to that extent now. Sure, and I, I, I was like, saying, you can, they can probably make a clone version of you. And that doesn't mean that people, they can do it, though. They may be able they, to calculate something that they may be able to calculate what a person could do based on what they got their calculations to be. That doesn't necessarily mean that they can replicate um, that in a general sense, because that's what that person would do. If there, there are some people who if they saw two car accidents about to happen, they see a little girl and they see a dog. And there's some cats that will save the little girl. There's some cats that will save the dog. The and so uh, um, the calculation is more sp uh, specific to the person than it is yeah. to the general thing. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think I guess what I'm saying is they would know us. They would know like who is the dog person. Like, sure, just by pure input of in, in all of our devices. Like, they know who we are in that aspect. Like, Ah, I got you. Oh, people put every aspect of their life and personality and uh, <laughs> uh, beliefs and convictions into their, you know, online profile, online profiles. And, uh, but the, uh, as Adam said in the beginning, <laughs> full circle moment, uh, there's plenty <laughs> of people who try to take a an aspect of their life and turn that into a personality because they are vapid and <laughs> boring. <laughs> There's a really interesting thing um, that the comedian Neil Brennan said uh -huh. uh, on, on his podcast, he was talking to his co-host and they, he was, they were talking about the idea of, of looking through someone's phone. And that's not necessarily the, the what I want to even focus on necessarily, but more so he, he was saying that 
he was like, when you look through someone's phone, you're looking through their their mind, essentially. Mm. And I was like, what? And then like 10 seconds later, I was like, oh, wait, that's a really good point. Because people's phones are, are so personal because like, if you look at like what people, you know, look up, but what they watch on YouTube, mm-hmm. what they randomly search throughout the day, you know, like people like will just look up stuff on, on, on like, right. What's the, you know, just random tidbits and facts and stuff. I'm like, man, that's a good point because like, or like what you write in like your notes. Cause for me, I have a lot of notes that I, I just type like random stuff like that pops up and I'm like, man, that's a good point. And it's like, when he, when he was like, you know, when you look through someone's phone, you're looking through their mind. I'm like, dang, that's that's pretty deep. Because, <laughs> like, a lot yeah. of what we think is in our phones, whether whether it's conscious or not. It's like, dang, that's a good point. Like, what who we follow on social media and what we watch on YouTube, what we just, like, just random things. Like, how long we're on the phone every day. All the information is in there. It's like, our phones are, like, our personalities in our hands. It's like, our <laughs> hands. It's just it's interesting to think of it like that. That's true. I don't know. I think it's important to de- detach from all that at, from time to time just to establish that you yeah. you are beyond that, you know? You like mm-hmm. not only that you are beyond it, but just you can you can function with just your your inner voice like <laughs> do you do you give do you give time to yourself like instead of putting in your energy into that all the time like like just i know i guess is is probably easier for me to say because i don't be on there i i guess i'm on my phone well maybe le- maybe a little bit less than the average person but i'm actually just not on social media that much but mm. I don't know. I think that I think that you should give yourself time to not be on that stuff. Though. No matter yeah, how long, sure. no matter how long it okay. is, just kind of just take a minute to be away from it. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. More than social media, I just be playing. I be playing games. Uh, yeah, but I do be on social media a lot though. Uh, hmm. But honestly, though, I think that statement, though, I think that's also part of it, though, because like, because like you're saying, like, you don't really be on social media like that or on your phone like that, even. But that's still, I I feel like a computer system could still make a observation about you, because okay, this person uses his phone two hours less than the average person. That's like a oh yeah. that's right. a detail, and that's just interesting. I'm not saying that they would know less about me, honestly, because yeah, I mean, Grubhub is a social media. Any like yeah. that's a, that's a <laughs> anything collection getting data. cookies, <laughs> anything really collecting like cookies, <laughs> anything that you use, you log in with Google or you log in with Facebook, stuff like that. Okay, they know yeah. when you on there now. They using yeah. they using all these things, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, your purchases it's, man that, that's what's so yeah that's what's so interesting when people like occasionally like you'll see people talk about like you know they're they're that they're recording our conversations they're trying to get our information like they already have that stuff man like i i, <laughs> I guarantee you just just like you said like doordash and grubhub like they know your favorite meal already like <laughs> It, like they know everything <laughs> like they know exactly what you like to eat like you know where your, home is you gps got a yeah <laughs> yeah like your gps alone like they can track where you've been like yeah right they actually all, was doing that in, in south korea all like, of you know, our like, phones are using our gps yeah and that's how they it works it can work to a society's advantage because that's how they were able to track like when i, I keep saying when the virus is because it's still going on but um at, I would say at the height of the chaos, I should say, you know, when the virus was going on, like that, in that sense, in Korea, they were using people's locations to track, like, where infected people have, have gone and who they might have infected. They were using that information, like, based off people's phones. Hmm. So, in that sense, it was useful and it helped them in that sense. But 
who knows they might what they could use that for in the future though like you know you just never know it could be some 1984 type big brother stuff (laughs) also here in the u.s they already been they have a law or they had a law uh i guess around the during the obama uh administration where they could look into our phone records and that's just one of the ways and they you know as always they always use the terrorism approach about it you yeah. know, they they use fear to with, justify to right. justify what they do and to take away our rights at times so it's like yeah. they've been they got to stop doing this man like <laughs> <laughs> Like they, they, I don't think they found any terrorists off of getting our phone records. And just, just, it's not about that. that. (laughs) Just the fact that they, I guess there's a certain amount of people here that believe that stuff that the government said. It's just a complete disrespect of our intelligence for one, (laughs) just everything. (laughs) Like just to know that the people are not gonna do nothing about it is 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 telling. Like we've we fall into yeah. this place where they can almost do whatever without no consequence. Like shout out to Eric Snowden, man. I, like, I was gonna mm, say, like, yeah, I this was gonna dude, meet you. This dude is the truest person, like, <laughs> like <laughs> How could you, how, like, he's brave, man. I just think he's so brave for revealing those things about, like, the stuff about our government that we already. Knew. Right. But yeah, whenever, whenever people are, are confirming this stuff, like, we need to be praising them and in the media or wherever we can, like, because the narrative that they bring to these people, the whistleblowers and all that, is that they're anti-American or yep. they are terrorists themselves? But the fact yeah. is, they're re- they're revealing tyranny and they're revealing the ter- the true terrorism. Right. Yeah, but, I don't know. I could rant all day about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's so interesting about that though? Like the same people that are all about you know Second Amendment, you know. I need to protect myself against the government just in case they, you know, they do some crazy stuff. These are the, the, those same people are, I'm guessing, but those are probably the same people that were calling Eric Snowden a a traitor. And and (laughs) calling for him to be killed. Like, yeah, I guarantee, I'm almost sure if you had a Venn diagram, I'm sure like they would overlap pretty well. They would, (laughs) it would be a nice oval in the middle there of those same people. And, and then, in fact, and it might just be one how, circle. Maybe and the thing is, how much of that circle. has to how much of that has to do with whatever false narratives got told about Eric uh, about Eric Snowden, right? Mm-hmm. And um, on top of, especially they're going to come out of those news networks that do that whole contradictive thing where for for people who associate themselves with a party who are so anti government. They listen to everything the government says. Yep. They subscribe to everything the government puts forward to them for people who who claim to be small slash anti. But they say they use the word patriotism, but yeah, they, well, they also using- they also say this country was founded on rebellion against you know what they saw Tyranny, as tyranny. Yeah. Yeah, but when, yeah. you know, it's just a now is in you know it never was solely about that, but now is blatantly you know just a clicks you know they polarize our government. But it that that kind of hypocrisy runs rampant throughout uh throughout this and most societies where they're like that's the bad guy, but you're doing what they're doing, but that's the bad guy. We're do, we're yeah. we're doing it, but we're doing it for better reasons. Yeah, it's like we don't want terrorism here, but we're going to inflict violence and horror among several uh, 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 and uh, colonialism among several of the countries. 
because because yeah, the narrative is is somewhat that they can't govern themselves or you know when you and, when when they know people here don't know shit about those those governments or those living situations etc in some country you know obviously some countries you know are are better at government than others but i mean we use those excuses to obviously do other things and we have arterial motives in these places so and they see Absolutely. that every you yeah. know but, but, money. <laughs> but anytime that rhetoric of you know like oh why are we ha- why do we have any occupation in that country is like oh we're bringing them freedom that doesn't mean shit yeah there's, don't you want to no- operate like yeah. us no <laughs> no <laughs> not really yeah it's like yeah they do that so they can put people in power that is gonna help them down, you know further that down the line you know we can mm-hmm. make deals with them and and they know that who's ever in power now, they don't want to talk to us. So mm-hmm. let's get that's why Gaddafi you know. was killed because exactly he was yeah. he was starting to to do his own thing with the with the financial side of you know, right. all, he was, in all different it ways. Was gonna be the, uh, it was going to be putting uh, putting Africa's resources behind their dollar, right? Because the only thing that only thing that makes the American dollar so strong is the connections it has to other powerful countries and the armed forces. If 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 we didn't have our military, America wouldn't have any kind of power behind this dollar. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. That's the that's what I have seen over. I mean, over there's years. nothing. It's no innovations that we have at the moment. That's we have no we have besides damn besides entertainment. entertainment. Besides uh, yeah, entertainment. Entertainment. And entertainment. It's not entertainment. It's not a uh, um. It's not doing anything for social it's economics. Not a it's not a resource. And, no. And it, I don't yeah. I don't I hardly see it, you know, evolving to a, a much, much bigger thing. It's just, you know, you know, people gonna have streaming, people gonna Sure. Yeah. I mean But I'm saying like you definitely China, have uh uh the Chinese government had a big stake to take in Gaddafi's death because China's all over the continent. Um pillaging gold and selling it back to them yeah china they, they <laughs> like what's so crazy if china if china and doing everything that china is doing right now whether it's you know what they're doing with the the muslim population over there whether it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. what they're doing to the uyghurs in africa yeah if china was a small country like in the the, the middle east or something we would try to be. We would be trying to fight them right now, right? And, but it's, it's, it seems like when China does some crazy stuff or Russia does some crazy stuff, we turn a blind eye to it because, well, they're too big for us to try to fight. <laughs> so we're just gonna let them <laughs> do what they couldn't do. Yeah, that's a fight we might. But we, but might we not always do. teasing each other. We always kind of nudging each other to do things like, yeah, like when they have these, yeah, pretty much unlawful strikes on these countries just out of nowhere mm-hmm. well, like terrorists like, and shit yeah and no i'm talking about like when they actually like like when they bombed syria uh, dr- or things uh, like that uh, like iran yeah the big one was iran like a few iran, months ago yeah. i was like i yeah. honestly thought that was going to erupt into like a, a a thing i'm surprised it didn't but it's like they do um, little things like send drones in the area and they get destroyed right. and yeah. those little things that that's trying to incite war is like i guess that's the what they have to constantly do now since everybody has a cling on to a superpower you know but yeah i don't know like, why for a half a second you said everybody has a cling on and i was like yo everybody I got cling ons whoa <laughs> and they probably where do i get a cling on <laughs> 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 i'm gonna trick you out there Nah, I heard it. I was like, "This yo, everyone's getting a Klingon." That sounds a little <laughs> slavey, but also, yeah. where can I get a Klingon? <laughs> Shout out to Trump Space Force. <laughs> whatever, whatever they're doing right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a note we can wrap on, fellas. Uh, we want to thank yeah. y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. This was a this was a lovely jambalaya of subjects. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely gumbo of uh of 
I, nah, I thought I thought I had some alliteration there. I did. There's a J Rock oh, song called Gumbo that I used to listen to. Forgot how I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, just just check that out when you get the chance. <laughs> I, I, before I do this full sign off, I gotta ask Marco, what is this hat? Oh, uh, it's actually uh, it's like a head wrap. Winter, it was like a winter thing where it's like you it make you look like a ninja. <laughs> But I just so kind of not a ski up. mask. Okay, I I saw it and I was like, "Yo, Marco got a conk," and so I was like, "Okay." Uh, <laughs> 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 like Marco looked like he about to be the new lead singer of the Temptations. <laughs> 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 but like have a second, because because like the the like it 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 like looked like it like had little bumps around it. It was it was it was a whole thing in my head. Um, but ignore me. Hey, Yo, sometimes uh, hats have shapes when you when you when you got locks, man. You should. Know this that. is true. It's true. <laughs> I, I do know this, even though I don't really wear hats. I, I always got my. Well, hair it's not a hat. Well, any any head covering is is going to be altered. <laughs> right, right, right. You absolutely right. <laughs> well, we want to uh, we want to thank y'all for listening again. <laughs> uh, I know we always ending on some awkward note. At least I didn't say whelp. Uh, and so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we want to thank y'all for listening. Uh, by all means, if you have any subjects, if you have anything you want us to write, uh, talk about, you have anything we want to unpack, you heard something you like, you heard something you didn't like. Tell us you know, about write us. Tell, tell us, us about how it. your hair affects your your, head <laughs> your headwear. <laughs> <laughs> tell us your tell us your favorite bonnet brand. Uh, <laughs> tell us your favorite color do rag. <laughs> Yo, uh, one of these days we, we we got we got to make it out to do rag fest uh, when the world isn't isn't uh, still in danger of COVID. I don't know if y'all know about do rag fest. Wait, wait. I'm afraid not. I think you told us about that before. Yeah, I might I might have put it in the chat or something like that. Uh, I want to say it happens in Atlanta, uh, but it's literally like Afro punk for do rags. <laughs> 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 and so like a, a homegirl of mine she uh she had like a whole like three different looks she had like a cape do-rag and uh they were, uh I'm, I'm gonna find the old posters like it was a whole like festival it was like a music festival for do-rags and shit um and cats came yeah, out real Dragon deep. Ball Z. yo <laughs> still a hilarious song to this day <laughs> Dragon Dragon Ball Do Rag is is a genius song uh, by Thundercat. Check that out as well as well as uh, what was that Gumbo by J Rock. See, there we go. We tied that in together. <laughs> Gemstone Do Rag by Royce. <laughs> <laughs> I wore I wore I wore gemstones in my Do Rag, so you didn't have to. <laughs> oh man, that's weird. We are four brothers on episode th- and th- on this episode three, but we are four brothers from the middle neighborhood of Gary, Indiana, that pride ourselves on having candid, challenging, hilarious, and at times random ass conversations, always rooted in three principles that we pride ourselves in: being forthright, vulnerable, and most of the fuck all, or uh, most of the fuck all. I don't know if I can't get that right. Oh well, vulnerable. How <laughs> you like it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> One of these days we're gonna have some merch. It's gonna say it's gonna say forthright, vulnerable, uh forthright yeah, forthright, vulnerable, and most of all honest. And then on the back of it it's gonna say well or uh uh um, what what was that? I had it, I always lose it every time I'm about to say it. What what was your thing, Adam? Um uh fun uh, the fun facts phrase. Uh G Wiz, G Wiz, G Wiz information. There you go. We're going G Wiz information, and it's going to have like get, a. We got to get Aaron's. Uh, what do you say? Tickle my fancy. Oh, tickle my fancy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they all going to have like graphics. <laughs> so, uh, uh, G Wiz information is going to have like just two eyes and a light bulb for you to figure it out, like idea. <laughs> and they're going to come up with better designs because I'm not a drawer. I dance and choreograph. That's my fucking medium. So, all right. <laughs> we love y'all. We appreciate you. And please tune in, share, like, subscribe. Air horns enter. Fire goes everywhere. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all of that.
It was time. Please. Share, y'all. Share. Join the conversation. That's right. All right. Much love. JTC. <laughs> JTC. I know. That, that is, that, that, that's the abbreviation JTC. <laughs> Word. <laughs> we love y'all. Peace. BRB show. I thought we was in the third. No, no. We just okay. We just one. There's a light that shines.